Hey YouTube, Koppersan here. You know, at this channel, we love a challenge. So today we're training a Demon Avenger to level 200 by only doing quests. Today's video will be part one because it takes awfully long to reach level 200 by only doing quests. But hey, we do get some really nice rewards in the progress. Because this is taking a tad longer than I thought it would. I was thinking, you know, I'll be done in a day or two. I'm at day six at the moment, or day seven even, and we're still not there yet. So I started streaming our progress on Twitch. Feel free to tune in there. I stream on most days. There is a link to our Twitch channel in the video description. Our quest to level 200 begins. We're starting off by helping out the residents of Edelstein fight back against the Black Wings. For this challenge I won't be using any cash shop EXP cards or leveling potions. Also we won't grind at monsters or boss monsters unless there is a quest that tells us to do so. We finish our training quests and are finally let outside of the resistance base, finally some daylight. We help out an old man and cut some flowers. <laughs> Demon Avenger used to be a Black Mage commander and now here we are hundred years later cutting flowers. <laughs> The class that we're playing, Demon Avenger, is actually a really unique class. This class only uses HP and all their skills are based around HP as well. They use a unique Exit skill that speeds up your attack if you attack multiple times with a specific Exit skill. This reduces the HP you recover with Life Sap, which I'll show you in a sec, but increases your attack speed and makes your attacks more powerful. Life Sap is a first job skill and at max level you recover 5% of your HP each attack. They also use a skill called Overload Release, which reduces your Exceed stacks while increasing your damage and healing you, allowing you to build up stacks again. So you have to manage that properly in order to play this class. So next up questing, we filled up a water tank, defeated some funky bunnies and reached level 30. <laughs> Honestly, the most exciting quest item that we got from completing all the quests around here is a gold bar. So let's quickly move on to the more exciting stuff. In the early levels in MapleStory, you'll literally drown in a sea of quests. We are doing three team dungeons until we reach level 66. We completed the Elinel Fairy Academy in Alinea, helping the fairies find their missing students. We completed Rihanna Strait, stopped the glacier from melting and clubbed some seals in the progress. And finally we wrap up at Gold Beach, dealing with a slimy problem after being lured there with the promise of a nice vacation. Man, we even dressed up for a nice holiday. Demon Avengers' second job is... Uh, special as it has some of the most uninteresting and useless skills out there like this one that increases your HP by 600 and defense by a whooping 500. I feel like I'm getting scammed out of my skill points. <laughs> or that this one that gives 40 attack. I mean 40 attack is nice but 20 skill points for, for this skill and that's all it does. <laughs> the bat swarm skill where we can summon a bunch of bats that we can control is pretty dope though. By the way, did you know that you can complete a quest on YouTube as well? If you hit the like button and subscribe, you can instantly complete it. The reward is unlimited high quality MapleStory videos and you get some additional EXP if you hit that bell notification as well. Finally, we are free from the beginner team though, so we can start doing some actually interesting quests. We started with the quest in Sleepywood. I am dedicated to completing all the quests here, except for the jump quests. I already hate myself enough for trying to level up like this. The Sleepywood quests can be divided in two parts. The first part is dealing with a Drake problem and helping Mr. Wetbottom get his book back, which rewards a unique overall that I'm sure many old school maplers will remember. The second half of the quest line focuses on defeating an ancient evil that lurks in the depths of the Antonal, the Balrog. There actually is a quest to defeat him 200 times, yeah 200, but that quest is not needed to complete the area, so yeah we're, we're not doing that. As part of the quest line we also restore an old sword. This sword was used by a hero who sealed Balrog before and actually having this sword in your inventory when you're battling Balrog you'll get a unique buff that you can't obtain elsewhere, it's a pretty nice touch. Balrog has been sealed away and we get an achievement. If you're looking for a fun way to collect achievements and collect monsters, then questing to level 200 is definitely one way to do it. We also get our completion medal and we will be collecting a ton of those. <laughs> Onwards to the next town, Orbis. Turns out Orbis is falling from the sky and it is upon us to help out the city. We also make a cute necklace for a cat and create a device to talk to a dog. That also happened. One of our quests here it used to be famous for its difficulty. We have to collect a use item called Nap and Dead Honey to complete this quest. But the drop rate is super high right now, so it's no problem. We can complete this quest pretty quickly. This used to be part of a longer quest line where we could get a Bone Helm, but it looks like that reward isn't around anymore. So if you still have a Bone Helm, that's actually a really rare item right now. 
We did find some red whips though, which will always hold a special place in my heart. Orbis does have one really unique quest. In this quest we have to play a harp to make a monster fall asleep. Can you guess which song this is? Afterwards, we complete the final few quests and reach level 80. Now we could do Afterlands at this point, but I really want to focus in on the quests that are around towns. So next up we're going to El Noth. The questline here is rather short and only involves killing some monsters and collecting etc drops. There is a bit of a story though about the Book of Ancient with Alcaster and completing this quest unlocks a store where you can buy all your potions and other items that are totally not useful anymore. Next up is the Vern Mine. You know, we helped out the resistance, so I think it's only fair that we'll help out the Black Wings a bit as well, you know, get in touch with our roots. The fun thing here is that some quests from Gallimer has us destroy robots and do generally evil stuff and completing these quests actually lowers your empathy. I've never seen that before that you can get lower empathies, so that's pretty funny. As a third job Demon Avenger, we're also getting a few more mobbing tools and healing skills to increase our tankiness and damage. More HP, hell yeah. With skills buffing our life sap and overload, we are getting stronger and stronger. The mobbing skill that we are getting is also the only skill that we will be using for the remainder of our journey, as our four job skills are just not suited for defeating a lot of monsters fast. After clearing that area, we're heading out to Megatia. This area is full of interesting lore and unique rewards. You can get two special capes that can only be obtained here, and a special glove as well, which is like a work glove on steroids. Again, it's completely useless, but hey, it is a pretty unique item. And Megatia is a city, and warning, spoilers ahead, that is built on the foundation of the work done by the Black Mage himself. During our quest here, we slowly figure this out through a missing alchemist and piecing the story together. We unlock a secret passage, work with passwords and solve riddles to uncover the truth. In the end, we even discover an old lab that was used by the Black Mage. Megatia has some pretty cool vibes and really good story for how old this content is. Now normally, we would fight Sakum at this point, but there isn't any quest that actually tells us, hey, go and defeat Sakum, so we can't fight him. We can only do bosses like Horntilt and the Root Abyss bosses, because those actually have quests that tell you, hey, go fight this guy. So instead, we go to an area where I haven't been in a long time, and in Forest. This area actually ties in quite nice with the story and you really start to understand why some people call you Kao and also the whole Temple of Time storyline. It is pretty interesting stuff if you're invested in the maple lore. This area has us go back in time and help us set up the base camp for the survivors who fled from the Black Mage when he first went on his quest for world domination. The bosses in this area do give decent EXP and we get a nice ring to boot. Then we go back to the future for our final questline of this video. Don't sleep on this questline. Not only is it very, very good, it also has a very unique boss fight and a reward that we can reroll for bonus stats an infinite amount of times. <laughs> Welcome to the Mushroom Shrine. We help along a girl who is half yokai, half human and try to solve problems that other yokai are facing. The questline has to defeat monsters, evade monsters, run from monsters, jump quests and your choices in this questline matter and we top things off with an amazing boss fight. This boss cannot be harmed by regular attacks. Instead, we need to fight him in a different way. If you want to complete the questline and fight him yourself, here is how I defeated him. This guy has a couple of attacks that you need to avoid. When the map starts zooming out, walk towards him to evade his tornado. When he starts flying, hide either behind the building on the right to evade his insta-death move, or you can hide on the left side as well, but I found the building a bit easier for our next step on how to damage him. This boss can only be damaged by pressing spacebar when you see a symbol above your head. This only appears when you enter a purple zone that appears after the boss is done with his flying attack. 
they need to complete a series of quick time events to damage him. And you need to do this 10 times. I find it easier to use the statue over here as a reference point for where I need to stand. But after this fight is over, we did not complete the team dungeon yet. There is another evil pulling the strings here that we need to defeat. In the end, we met Asia and some other NPCs as well that are from Neo Tokyo. I hope that area will return one day as well. That was an awesome area. As a reward for this team dungeon, we get a chair, some titles and a really awesome cape. The cape is also very useful for reboot players and the best part is that if you aren't happy with the bonus stats, you can just drop the cape and request a new one, free of charge. You can just keep rerolling those bonus stats infinitely. I'm working hard to complete this challenge and right now we are level 165 and I will be streaming most of my progress on Twitch and I'll make a video for part 2 once we're done and reach level 200 so we can wrap this up. After that I think I'm going to power level a bit to make up for the lost time. Thank you all so much for watching and stay tuned for part 2. As always, many thanks to our members as well for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Konek, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, FLX, Jeff Wang, Pinky Traveler, Terry Kim, Jiju, Galaxy Art, Gesus Rodriguez, Varese, Riser Aryu, Dries Sumker, Plux, Zeddy, Wiley, Kevin Han, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace OTI, Riley Frank, Milkja, Simak, Safronix, Lonzo BG Extremes, Caveman, oh yeah, Harry Gardner, Estavo Silva, Ido Hyman, Anwar NHI, Brandon, Frank Bouquet, Ziggy Deer, and Fine Asian Guy. If you would like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, check out the join button below this video. Thank you all so much for watching as well. Stay safe and happy mapling.